next project, I'm going to build something I've wanted to build for a long time. I'm going to build a tree out of rebar. Yeah, a rebar tree. I'm going to take rebar, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to bend it, I'm going to weld it, and I'm going to make it look like a tree. I created this jig to bend the rebar. It's pretty simple. I just hooked up this black three-quarter inch pipe to my trailer. I strapped it to the back of my trailer and I just stick this guy in here to the mark. There's my mark. I put that there. I take another pipe and shove it on here and middle and bend. Pretty simple. My pipe bending, oh, here's Roxy. My pipe bending on my trailer was working great with the two pipes. Uh, problem is, it's raining out there and I wanna keep working. So I went to the store, got a cheap uh, bender. This is a rebar bender. It only costs like 16, 17 bucks. And that's what I'm gonna use instead. But I'm still gonna use the pipe. I slid the pipe on here. I got two marks at, um, at one feet, one foot, and do like so. The pipe keeps it from, keeps kind of a sharp bend so it just doesn't round it. And I have this guy as a guide to see how much I want to bend so I keep them fairly consistent. This is three quarters, or no, this is five eighths. It's still pretty hefty. It says this this is only rated for a half inch, but ah, I'm not buying it. A little more. system here. It's really for the second bend because I couldn't lay it flat on the ground and bend it back. There's my mark. And with this bend I'm just trying to get it back so this is in plane with that. So it should be the same angle of course. This is more of an eyeball. these first pieces, the long pieces, I'm going to cut with an angle iron, but I'm going to get down to where I need smaller, a whole bunch of smaller pieces, and I'll probably end up cutting them some other way that's faster, but for now, angle iron. Here's where we're at. I got some. Uh, I got four half-inch welded together, and this forms the trunk of the tree, the main trunk. This is five-eighths, and this is the outside of the trunk and the leg of the trunk. 
There'll be four of these, so there'll be four legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this guy onto here, and the other legs kind of branch off differently. And then I will take, so I got five eighths, I've got half inch, and I've got some more three eighths that I'm going to start branching off from there. I was thinking about maybe doing quarter inch. There is quarter inch rebar I could branch off from there, but most stores don't carry it, so I might have to make a special trip, which I'm not sure that I want to do and may not need it. We'll see. But first, I got some big ugly welds that I need to grind down for, so this will fit into this groove nice. Um, I'm not a welder by any stretch. So a little grinding and a little more welding. Probably going to put the tree. I would like to uh, drill some holes in a big boulder and have the tree come out of there. In the meantime, I'm going to make a temporary sand so when I can finish welding the uh, branches, it's not tipping over on me and I can still kind of move it around. Although it's going to get heavier and heavier. So I'm going to make a quick. I'm going to make a quick stand. Okay, I got this thing sitting in here. These aren't really straight up and down. So I drilled a little bit bigger holes, like one inch holes, uh, for five inch rebar. So they're a little sloppy. And to make things simple, I just, when I built the stand, I brought it out, I brought it out here, and I just set this thing on top and made some circles where to drill the holes. And you can see they're not perfectly square, but that's okay, because I'll do the same thing uh, wherever I find, well, either, either rock or concrete. We'll get to that, uh, cross that bridge when we get there. Now I'm gonna start sizing the branches and welding them on and just kind of filling the whole thing out with uh, 3 eighths or half inch and 3 eighths. I'm going to kind of have to hold them in place and weld them. Those little white things on the end are so I don't poke my eye out while I'm working on it. And the reason I have a pink shirt is because I didn't have a long sleeve shirt that I wanted to destroy. I have like a dedicated welding shirt so I went and bought one on the clearance rack for eight bucks at Target and it was on the clear track for obvious reasons because it's pink. So it's really hot out here. I'll probably get maybe an hour of stuff done. And I'll, I'll probably have a few more phases. I'll kind of look at it and I like to look at it during the week and just kind of get a sense for what it needs. So on to welding. The property I live on is surrounded by cornfields, and my property used to be an old farmstead. Oh, all that you see out there will soon be houses, which is kind of a drag. 
uh, but I probably won't be here. Well, I'll be on this planet, but not at this place. This is a pile of rocks. I just every spring the rocks come out of these fields, and I go grab them. The farmers don't care; they're happy to get rid of them. So I drag them back, and I've used them. I've used hundreds of them. So I was looking for a rock to put this tree into, and I thought that was kind of slick. I could clean up those scratches; not a big deal. But I think the one I would like the most is this guy right here. Almost looked like it was squared on purpose. Problem is, it's on the back side and it's surrounded by woods. So, I'm gonna have to get the bobcat out here. Well, I would either way, but I'm gonna have to smash a path through here and grab this rock. Okay, I dry fitted the tree into the rock and it fits fine. A little tight, but pretty good. And now I'm, I took it back out and now I have to permanently um, fasten it or secure it into the holes. And I'm gonna use epoxy for that. A five eighths inch rebar going into six or seven eighths inch holes, six inches deep. I did the math and we'll see what happens. I'm more of an English guy than a math guy but I figured I need to fill the holes about two inches deep in order to fill the whole cavity and probably have some ooze out. So I made some dip sticks while I'm filling to make sure that's at two inches, the little marks there, to see that I get pretty close to two inches. And I'm gonna fill it with two-part epoxy. This is two-part epoxy, it comes in one tube, it's kinda nice, they're spendy though, like 20, 25 bucks, closer to 25 bucks. And it's got a little mixing nozzle, nozzle right here, so when it comes out, the two pieces spin around and mix together. And you're supposed to squirt out a, you know, several inches before you get started. So hopefully there's enough in this, and hopefully it works, and we'll see what happens. So I had to squeeze a little bit out in order to get the mixing process working properly. And then I start filling up the holes. I got my fancy sticks there. Everything seems like it's going good. The problem was that the, it was a little thicker than I thought it was gonna be, and it was kind of sticking to the sides. So I wasn't really sure. You couldn't, I mean, it, just, it didn't just run down to the bottom, so I couldn't really tell how much was in there. So the sticks were kind of worthless. I kind of pushed them down there a little bit just to see, you know, try to get it to the bottom. But basically it was pretty much a kind of a guessing game. And then I picked up the tree and set her into place. After it was in place, I had to whack it a little bit to get it down in there. 
And then I taped the sides, because there was so much gooping out, I taped the sides of the, uh, the legs so it wouldn't spill up on top of that and kind of smoothed it out a little bit on the tape. And then I pulled the tape out of, you know, pulled the tape away. The epoxy I used was a little lighter gray than I wanted. I thought it would match the rock a little bit better. So while it was still somewhat wet, I took a wire brush and I scraped a bunch of um, rock dust, I guess, onto the epoxy. And it worked pretty darn good. It, I mean, the epoxy just kind of just vanished. So I was pretty pleased with myself on that guy. Um, the ultimate goal for this, where I was going to put this thing, I figured it out. I decided to put it where I had a, this little raised garden uh, with a big rock in it in front of my house. And I was going to take that rock out and put the rock with the tree in it. However, that rock was really big and proved to be rather difficult to get out of the way. And yeah, so it was, uh, it was a learning experience, absolutely. All right, that didn't really go according to plan. Not at all, as a matter of fact. We got a little bit of a mess there, methinks. Yeah. That was not in the playbook. That was a big rock. Too big for this machine. One thing was for certain, I wasn't going to rebuild that thing. Uh, that raised garden. I never really liked it all that much anyway. So I decided to demolish it and move the tree sculpture a little closer to the house, which I liked anyway. Uh, the ironic thing, one of the ironic, I don't know if it's irony, but I ended up using the same rock that I pulled out of there. It's all scratched up, but I cleaned it up. I thought it would be more dramatic to have that thing underneath my, the rock that held the tree, and I was right. Uh, it turned out great. I liked uh, I liked that aspect of it, made it sit up a little bit higher, a little more noticeable. Of course, I had to smooth out where the raised garden was and plant some seed there, but it's, it's all coming back, so it turned out good. All right, that's it. This one's done. I also put some lights on in the back that kind of backlights this at night, some solar spotlights, and it looks actually pretty cool. I'm really happy the way this turned out. It's one of my few projects that kind of went exactly as planned, which doesn't happen very often. Most of my projects kind of take a, a zig or a zag here and there, and which is okay, but this one actually turned out just the way I wanted to.